Hey, welcome back to Morrison Heights Family Connect. I'm Tim Peabody. This is the weekly podcast of Morrison Heights Baptist Church. And our guest today is Dr. Cynthia Sr., recently doctor. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. Well, it's a it's a big deal. I imagine you feel a lot of relief being done with that. Very much so. <laughs> Very then much so. Your doctorate is in healthcare administration. It is. And what do you do? I career wise, I teach at the dental school at UMC. So I am over the I'm the clinic director for the dental hygiene program. Clinic director for mm-hmm. the dinner dental hygiene program. I am. So when we go to the dentist and uh, somebody cleans our teeth, you probably trained them. Yeah. If they went to UMC, yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So How long have you done that? I started at UMC about eight years ago. And being at any sort of academic institution, you wear many hats. Mm -hmm. So to say, hey, what do you do? It's never just a one word answer. Um, I teach in the clinic as well as in the classroom. Um, we all work together in labs and, um, as well as working, trying to make that partnership between our dental students and our dental hygiene students, cause they work together day in and day out. So that's a very, um, important part in ma- building those professional relationships among them too. Yeah. We want the dentists and the hygienists to get along. Absolutely. Sure. <laughs> we depend on both of them. Uh, your family is your husband. Dave mm-hmm. and your daughters, uh, Chloe and Abigail. That's right. Um, what, what type of work does Dave do? Dave works for the Army Corps of Engineers. He's a research civil engineer for them. A research civil engineer. Mm-hmm. Okay. He works in survivability. Survivability. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> Me neither. He'd have to, you'd have to ask him a lot more. They test explosives and that type of stuff. So. Okay. I always pick at him and tell him he's got the grown man's dream job because what grown man wouldn't want to blow things up? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, that's a good job. My brother-in-law used to do that at Erdick. There you go. That's, so maybe they worked together. Maybe so because that's exactly where he's at. Okay. Well, so, yeah. Yep. Uh, I know a little bit about what they do, um, but I didn't know anything about survivability. Yep. By the way, my record on survivability is 100%. Awesome. Me too. Everything I've ever done, I survived. Me too. We're, we're doing good. Yeah. Um, what about your girls? How are they doing? They are wonderful. Abigail is eighth grade and loving it. She's already in eighth grade. Yeah. Yeah. Chloe's fifth and liking it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Chloe, Chloe likes school, but doesn't love school as much as Abigail does, so... Yeah. I know she's had a lot of headaches. So she does. Do you want to talk about that? Yeah. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Um, yeah. For a little over a year, we've struggled greatly with migraines. And um, they've run um, MRIs and found some suspicious, you know, findings on an mm-hmm. MRI. And, you know, as a parent, that's that's scary. You don't yeah. know. Yeah. And, of course, they're telling you we're going to rule out everything. I don't mm-hmm. even want to know what you're ruling out. Just rule yeah. it out from the parental side of that. Mm-hmm. Um but we, by the grace of God, it seems to have been she's severely deficient in vitamin D. And so, of course, we get that. There's fruits and vegetables that have that. But, of course, you get it a lot from milk and, you know, being outside. Mm-hmm. But she's allergic to the milk protein as well. Huh. So it's kind of a double-edged sword on that. But she's been taking vitamin D supplements for about six weeks and so we're off of them right now, and we go back to Texas Children's Hospital next month for some more lab work, and um, hopefully our levels will be maintaining. So you feel like it's possible for her to get the vitamin D regulated with just diet and sunshine? And the supplements. And the supplements, okay. Mm-hmm. So that's our goal, and the neurologist um, said that what we're trying to determine and make sure of is that she is, in fact, absorbing what she's being exposed to. Because from my understanding, and I'm not a neurologist, but from my understanding is you can be exposed to it, but your body may be preventing, your body may not be absorbing what Mm -hmm. you need. Mm -hmm. So that's what they're trying to determine is can her body absorb it? If so, great. We can maintain it. If not, we'll look at another treatment modality. But she's been doing really well. Good. Well, we've been praying for her. And I've, you know, I've been in a group me group where you've been sending out prayer yes. requests for, for her. So we appreciate that. Um, pray that she keeps, keeps improving. Yes, it's been it's been a long road, but I feel like we're we're on the mend. So it's been good. 
I think I might have known her before I knew anybody else in your family because she was in Stephanie's class, I guess, three years ago. Yeah. And that yep. was, was that before y'all came to Morrison Heights? Y'all came that year maybe? We started coming that year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. What was it that made you guys uh, decide to stay at Morrison Heights? <sighs> when we moved to Clinton in 2018, we wanted a church that um, preached truth, mm -hmm. um, that had a youth that our kids could grow and really dive deep into their own relationships uh, and friendships and their own walk. Um, and Morrison Heights seemed to have those components at what we were looking for. But I also wanted a church that we could give to and not just always take. I feel like a church, you have to be able to give and take in a relationship. True. So um, we attended, we visited Morrison Heights a good bit. And we hadn't gotten plugged into a life group at that point. And then one Sunday afternoon, I won't forget, because I was at home and I was cooking the biggest pot of red beans and rice. Mm, and um, JJ Dunn, and I don't know who else, I cannot remember who else was with him, but they visited our home and invited us to their life group. And so that's how we got started going to Tim Rowan, the Dunn's, and the Forest Life Group. And the life group relationship has really just been a truly true blessing because hmm. I feel like at a large church some people may feel intimidated trying to make those close connections and Morrison Heights is a large church mm -hmm. um, but I feel like our life groups are possibly our lifeline into meeting and greeting and getting comfortable and, and getting outside of our comfort mm -hmm. zones well that's what they're supposed to be and and that's what we tell people you know if you want to feel like you really belong at Morrison Heights you need to come to worship, of course, mm -hmm. be in a life group, yes. and serve somewhere. And you guys have found ways to serve as well. And we Absolutely. Appreciate that. Absolutely. Um, and I also liked that uh, Dave was in the men's mentoring program. So he really that. enjoyed it. Good. He really enjoyed it. Good. Well, it's meant a lot to me and to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Well, um, I was going to make a phrase, Tom. I, I was trying to take what she said and make it into like a motto, and I think this is it. Uh, I'm people worried. people come for the youth ministry, but they stay for Tom Radden. Oh. Okay. I, yeah, trademark that one. I'm just kidding. It should it should be stay for the life groups. Uh, but I guess that worked. Just had to bring <laughs> had to bring Tom. Is Tom in your life group? Carrie is. Carrie is. Tom works too much. Yeah, but I work Sunday. Yeah. 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 Carrie gets there. Yes. Tom has to work both services on Sunday. Uh, He's there in spirit. Yeah. That's we right. should get his name. Or his picture on like one of those fans and just have him next to Carrie. Yeah. Uh, Tom works hard. Really <laughs> last, last night when we were trying to figure out when we were going to film this podcast episode and Tom wouldn't get back with us, I, I said all kinds of bad things about him. I feel bad now because he was doing volunteer work after hours. Oh. Really. I didn't say anything bad about you, Tom. No. I just said, if I don't hear from Tom by 8.30, we'll plan on doing it at 4.30. Yeah, you save all that for the episodes. <laughs> That's right. I, it's the only time I ever give Tom a hard time is while we're filming. Uh, but it's, it's the most fun we have on the podcast. It's awesome. Um, so, yeah, he was, he was unloading trucks. They're doing lots of uh, disaster relief stuff. Yes. In missions. So we've Ministry been, alone. we'll man the trailer over in the MC parking lot from time to time. Really? Y'all are open there too. And Sunday morning, I was telling Tim Rowan, I was like, you do know that there's like cases of water and stuff like scattered all around. Like it was like stacked outside the trailer. He was like, no. And I said, well, it was there Saturday evening. I'm assuming it's still there this morning. And so after church, we went by and people had just filled that donation bucket was full Everything outside was full. People had um, tucked stuff underneath the 18-wheeler. And so we loaded it in the trailer. And I, t I was telling Dave, and I said, you do know they're having to unload this onto smaller trailers to get it down there. I guess that was Tom's job. <laughs> Good work, Tom. Yeah, that was a lot of water. That, I mean, the whole, I promise you, the whole, probably one, two rows, all the length of the trailer were full of water. Wow. That is a lot of water to move. Mm -hmm. Water's not light. No, Tom not at all. Uh, well, I want to read our church's prayer, prayer request hospital list. Uh, we like to remind people of who to pray for. Absolutely. Um, but I also want you to share a verse, encourage everybody with a verse. Uh, so I'll read the hospital list okay. while you're finding in your Bible where, okay. where we're reading. Yes. Uh, and then we'll pray.
first time I've made this mistake. I didn't look up the hospital list before. Oh, slacker. This is what you call dead air. Hey, it's, it's Tom that we make fun of on this show. We don't make fun of me. <laughs> you imagine how scary this would be if it was live? Oh, I know. I, know. This, this I think for the first few months, my mom thought it was live. Oh, well, that's okay. Tom's mom probably did too. That's it. Mom, look how good I did. <laughs> Yep. All right. Here's here's the hospital list. Remember to pray for Billy Lynn Arthur in the hospital. Uh, Adele Brooks is asking for prayer for her nephew, Kenneth Shearer. Um, specifically, we're praying that he can find a liver transplant donor. Mm -hmm. Pete and Peggy Corley's nephew's wife has COVID or pneumonia. Terry Dent's brother, Bob, still with COVID. And then, of course, we've prayed for months now for Mickey Reeves' brother, Brad, and Brad passed away this week uh, oh. with COVID. Um, Brad's nickname is Cornbread. So funeral was Tuesday. We're praying for Mickey and, and his family. Um, share a verse with us, and then I'll lead us in prayer. Okay, that'd be great. All right, so this morning I was doing my, my devotion, and um, this morning it was Psalms 105, and this verse 4 really um, just really spoke to me, and I even talked about it with Abigail, and it says, Seek the Lord and His strength. Seek His presence continuously. So it's just a constant reminder that no matter what we're going through, the good, the bad, we seek Him in all His guidance to lead us down the right path. Amen. Let me pray. Father, thank you so much for the senior family and for the recent accomplishment that Cynthia made. Uh, we pray, Lord, for continued progress for Chloe and her health. Pray, Lord, that you'll deliver her from headaches and help them and the doctors to figure out how best to help her. We lift up these in our church that are hurting, that are sick and in the hospital. And we remember Mickey Reeves, his wife Amy, and uh, their family dealing with the loss of Mickey's brother this week. God, thank you for your hand on our church. We pray that you'll continue to bless us and guide us. We pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. All right, Cynthia, that's it. Thanks for coming on the podcast. Thanks for having me. It was fun. Anything else folks need to know? No, not that I know of. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's it for episode about 107. 106 of the podcast. Uh, we look forward to seeing you back next week. This is Morrison Heights Family Connect. Tom sighs as he thinks about how many episodes he's edited. <laughs> this is Morrison Heights Family Connect. We love our family.